Shalom, brothers, shalom, sisters, most high Christ bless. This is also Lemuel, and y'all are tuned in to In the Scripts. And y'all already know, as always, man, I got brothers with me. Uh, we got a new brother. No. We got a new brother. The original. <laughs> the original. <laughs> what is this? Hey, new, new for 2016. I've been here this year. I ain't been here this year. I ain't been here almost a year down there, you know. Oh, excuse my language. <laughs> no, you good. Yeah, you on Periscope. Hey, good, it's been bro. a while. I'll forget Get my radio voice back on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll praise Who I got with you? This is Officer Zerubbabel, Dallas Camp. What's going on, uh, buddy? Uh, we got everybody listening. Yes, We're a Periscope, so everybody, what's going on? This is uh, Officer Masharatia, Dallas. All praise. We got a couple of other faces in here that are going to be shot today. It's all good. This is good. <laughs> Officer, <laughs> Officer yeah, 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 fear on the camp. Oh, fear in the building. <laughs> <laughs> I, saw, um, I saw quite a few comments, uh, posts and stuff like that on, uh, on the various... Um, Social media pages and stuff like that. We actually did quite a few interviews. Myself, Officer Zeruba Bell. Oh, I do want to go back. Don't let me forget. Yeah, I'm going to do it right now, actually. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, you spoke with the brother, the, uh, the senator? Is he yeah, senator? senator. Okay. So, now, you mentioned he had, you know, he had no solutions, no, no nothing. Nothing. I mean, he couldn't even tell you what he's done as of late. Now, I don't know how long he's been in office, but he couldn't even tell you, you know, how lo- uh, uh, <laughs> what he's done as of now. And that's the issue when you praise men that have these statuses and have these high titles, mm-hmm. but then when you hear them speak, it's like, yo, you that's all you got? Yeah. That's what you get. Give me Sirach 27. I'm going to show you something. Sirach chapter 27. I should have wrote it down, but I didn't. It's all good. Sirach chapter 27. Don't praise a man before you hear him speak. Mm. If you find it, go ahead and read it. Gotcha. Sirach chapter 27 and verse 7. This is the book of Sirach chapter 27 and verse 7. Praise no man before thou hearest him speak, for this is the trial of men. So the Bible says don't praise a man just because he has status or just because he has a title or whatever. Don't praise him until you hear him speak. We heard the man speak and literally tell us, I, 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 ain't, I ain't really did nothing. Right. I've done <laughs> he, nothing. <laughs> Nothing to say, and I I wish we had recorded it. Hey man, <laughs> I wish we had, <laughs> I wish we at least voice recorded or something. You know, it's yeah. actually the lady. Uh, sorry to cut you no, off, but that lady on uh, what matters, she recorded him, so he's on there. Did she? Yeah, she did. Ecclesiastes wow. five and one says, "Keep thy foot when I go to the house of the Lord." So he applied the commandments, I guess. Right. I, I <laughs> if that's what he doing, <laughs> shoot. So I've heard. I, we've all heard the rhetoric. You know, no, you know. Uh, matter of fact, the the sister, um, the uh, in Minnesota, uh, Minnesota, you know, she keeps screaming, no just uh, justice and peace. She wants justice. She wants peace. Da da da. I need y'all to understand. <laughs> yes, brother Royce West. Uh, boy, she they they keep screaming, we want justice and we want peace and all of this, and they scream that, and then they'll be running in the middle of the street. During rush hour traffic, <laughs> that ain't peace. That ain't that that, that shows you the, the the foolishness of the nation of Israel, the so-called blacks and Hispanics. I'm gonna show you in the Bible that there ain't gonna be no justice and there ain't gonna be no peace until the Israelites are back in rulership until Christ returns. Isaiah chapter 59 and verse seven. Isaiah chapter because everything we oh before we get that second Ezra 15 and one everything that we. They, everything we say we come out of the Bible with because the Bible has all answers. All our wisdom, all our knowledge, all our understanding comes out of the Bible because the Lord put the Spirit on us to do it. 2 Ezra 15 and 1. This is the book of 2 Ezra chapter 15 and verse 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. That's why we go, when we went out to uh, for the 4th of July, we did the flyer mission. We went out, uh, uh, what was it, Friday night, Thursday night, and did the flyer mission at the, um, at, the, at the march because the Lord commanded us to. He said, speak the words of prophecy. Use the Bible, not no emotional rants and all of this other stuff. That's unprofitable. Come on. Which I will put in thy mouth. Which the Lord puts in our mouth to do. His words are like fire. Come on. Sayeth the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper. Which is the Bible. So now let's go back. Isaiah 59. That's why everything, all the comments that we make in regards to the shootings and the protests 
and the comments they make with justice and peace. That's why we can go into the scriptures because the Lord put it on our spirits to do it. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So the Bible says the Lord's gonna bring us into Egypt again. Egypt is synonymous for the word bondage, slavery. So he said that he was gonna bring us into slavery again. Let's, how do we get over here? How do the blacks get over here? So read that from the top. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68 And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again So it said the Lord's going to bring us into slavery again With ships Who did that happen to? It said we were going to go into slavery on slave ships you know? By the way whereof I spake unto thee Just like Moses said it was going to happen That's how it happened Go ahead. Thou shalt see it no more again and We were not going to see our homeland anymore Which is Jerusalem Go ahead. And, there, and once you got off of those slave ships Ye shall be sold. You are going to be sold. Hey. Unto your enemies. To your friends. Unto your enemies. To your friends. Unto your enemies. The Bible says you are going to be sold to your enemies. Would your friends put you in slavery? Would your, would your friends split up your family? Would your friends do that to you? No. So the Bible says that we were going to be sold to our enemies. Go ahead. For bond men. For slave men. And bond women. And slave women. Go ahead. And no man shall buy you. And no one's going to redeem us except for Christ, the black Messiah. Give me verse 48. Verse 48. This is the most high God speaking to the Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And he said, do what? Feed the flock of the slaughter. We feed the flock of the slaughter. Who are the ones that are being slaughtered in the middle of the streets like dogs? That's the so-called blacks and Hispanics. That's us. So we come out here and pass out the flyers to wake our people up to who they are. Come on. Whose possessors slay them. Because guess what? When we came over here to the Americas, we were possession. We were possession to the so-called white man. That's a fact. That's that's fifth grade, fourth grade history, right? It says what? Whose possessors slay them. Whose possessors kill them in the middle of the street. Come on. And hold themselves. And hold themselves what? Not guilty. Not guilty. That's why you can have men that will be that will kill a black man, kill a Hispanic man on camera and get away with it scot free. That's why the Bible promises. So the, the, the solution for us is not marching. We've been doing that since the 50s, 60s, 70s. We've been doing that. So the solution is not marching. We're not marching no more. Now we must repent. Uh, Matthew 4, 17. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Hey, slow me, sorry, press, press. No more marching, now repentance. Now we must repent. This is what Christ said, Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. This is the book of Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say. So this was his first sermon, his first message. The first time he preached, he said what? Repent. Come on. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Because Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah, is soon to return. So we must repent as a nation of people. This is not going to stop. Us being killed in the streets is not going to stop. It's going to get worse. So for those of us that wake up to the knowledge of who we are, the Bible says we must repent and keep the commandments of God as the Israelites. Not as Baptists, not as Muslims, not as uh, uh, Christians. Uh, the, the doctrine, what you got? Lamentations. Come on. This is the book of Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 17. As for us, our eyes as yet fell for our vain help. Vain help is us looking to the justice system for justice. Us looking to the court systems. How many people have gotten off in the last year? But we're still looking for vain help, empty help, help that is unprofitable to us as a nation. Come on. In our watching, uh -huh. we have watched for a nation. We have watched for America. That could not save us. That cannot save us out of the condition that we're in. The only way to save us out of the condition that we're in is to repent and come back to the commandments of God as the Israelites. That's it. That's it. In verse 18. Come on. Verse 18. They hunt our steps. That we cannot go in our streets. That's what happened to Mike Brown. When he was shot down in the middle of the street, he was pretty much chased down. That brother was running away and got shot down. It said they what? They hunt our steps. They hunt our steps, come on. That we cannot go in our streets. That we can't go in our streets. We can't even drive down a neighborhood without Sam Dubois being, his, his head being blown off. He's in his neighborhood. He said, y'all live around the corner. My license is at the house around the corner. Whether that was true or not, we don't know. But he can't even go in his own in, in his own streets. 
Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Very good. Well, there you have it. Many teachable moments out here. Whatever you believe or what you don't believe, it's all up for us to discover in the Word of God. Come on. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 59 and verse 7. Their feet run to evil. And so this is this is talking about the so-called white man. The Bible says their feet runs to evil. Come on. And they make haste to shed innocent blood. And they make haste to shed innocent blood. That's why you can be reaching for your license and get shot. Because they shed innocent blood. Come on. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Sin. Wasting and destruction are in their path. They do the same thing in other countries, dropping bombs and stuff like that. Come on. The way of peace, they know not. The Bible says, the so-called white man, the way of peace, they don't know. So how can you run to a nation of people that has no thought of peace? Mm -hmm. They cannot comprehend the word peace. Mm -hmm. So you talking about justice and peace, you ain't going to get it because you run into a nation that has no thought of peace. They don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. Literally, it's not in their spirit or their soul to understand that word. So stop. Stop with the justice and peace stuff. Stop. It's wow. not in the Bible. You ain't getting it. The scriptures say even when they came with peace, war was in their heart. Yeah, war was in their heart. War was in their mind. That's what's in their thought process. Uh, read on. The way of peace they know not. So guess what? No peace. Come on. And there is no judgment in their going. No, ju no justice. They don't know judgment. They don't know justice. So there ain't going to be no peace. You ain't going to get no justice for what happened. There's not going to be a right judgment. You've seen that many a time. So why are you expecting it now? It's not going to happen. Stop. I'm going to show you what gives us the peace, though. Uh, Psalms, not, not Psalms, Proverbs 3 and 1. Verse 1 and verse 2. I'm going to show you where our peace comes from. It's not in the marching. It's not in the protesting. We see how that turned out. That turned out with bullets. <laughs> Not so peaceful. <laughs> Not so peaceful at all. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 3 and verse 1. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Let your mind keep the commandments. Come on. For length of days. For length of days. And long life. And long life. And, and, what? and peace. And peace. So where does your peace come from, brothers and sisters? Your peace from, comes from keeping the commandments of God. Like the officer was bringing out earlier. If we understood loving your neighbors, you love yourself, you wouldn't have 300 uh, 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 bodies being shot or brothers mm -hmm. and sisters being shot in Chicago. That was uh, over the last couple of days. Eight dead. Hundreds wounded. If we understood love your neighbors, you love yourself. But you want peace from, yeah, we need to go up to the courthouse and we need to sit on the steps for 12 hours. Maybe they'll listen to us then. You crazy as hell. You gonna be a hot negro. You gonna be a hot, a hot confused, sleep negro. That's it. That is it. Yeah. So the Bible is telling you: no judgment, no justice, no peace from the so-called white man. No peace from this justice system. I don't care if Trump get in the office or what's the girl name Hillary get in the office. It, it don't, don't matter. It don't matter. That's why we don't. That's why we don't sit up and we don't. We're not going to the polls. Yeah, the, the solution is at the polls. That's crazy. How? How so? How? If the solution is at the polls, how come we still at the bottom of society right now? Exactly. How, how come we still Y'all been voting for years. Yeah, for years, but we still don't own nothing. I don't right. know. It's, it's at the polls. We still getting shot down the streets like dogs. Man. Are we not? Right. You right. You right. We're live here again at uh, this rally out here, of course, um, at Elo Park. And look who I bumped into, the yep. magnificent yep. Senator Royce West. Yep. Who better to speak to uh, what the issues are and if we can get some type of answers or some type of solutions. The name of the group or the name of the organization was heard last night. It's called What Matters Out of Frustration. But the frustration led to what ideas can we create? What actions can we create? What can I do? And so, Senator Royce West, I ask you, what's your take on this deja vu situation here? Well, I, I must admit, when I woke up this morning at about 4.30, and turned the television on, and saw the news of what occurred in, in Minnesota, the tears came from my eyes. And if no one felt that, then not you. Uh, 
when I'm watching what occurred in Baton Rouge. Again, same field. And we seem like we come to this place every year. The difference during the last three or four years is that all of it, a lot of it has been captured on video. Where before that time it was he say, she say. More and more now, people across the world are seeing exactly what's happening with the African Americans in this country. And the answer is number one, we're going to have to vote. Uh, number two, we're going to have to insist on changing the police culture. And the fact is, and unfortunately, uh, there are a lot of Anglos that are afraid of uh, black men. Uh, just because of our sheer size. I've got a grandson that's older than me. I mean, it's taller than I am. He's 15 years old. And you can imagine how an officer just saw five feet has never been exposed to African Americans other than on their job. They respond to someone like that. They would be apprehensive and they would be responding out of fear. What do you say to people that say, we need to comply? Black men need to be less aggressive. If the police officers ask you to do something, you should follow instruction, and that's maybe what has caused these last two years. Well, you know, some of it is. Let me give an example. Should you comply? Yes. Because, you know, you can't win it out on the street. You may be, you may be able to win it in a court. Uh, I can recall one time I got stopped for a quote uh, uh, rolling through a stop sign. I had my, had my, had my kids in the car with me, and I said, it's a good teaching number. Yeah. Okay? I was complying. I took the ticket and I said, okay, he won out here. I went in the court. And I won in the court. And they knew that I won in the court. You can't win it out. You just can't. Yeah. And so, yes, you do have to be compliant. What's the difference between the leaders of our time now and the leaders from the 60s, like Dr. Martin Luther King? Yeah, I don't know that there's a great, I, I think it's just a matter of, of a, a difference in it being the 60s and also it being 2016. Uh, many, many of the same things that uh, we are obviously dealing with, we, that was dealt with by Dr. King, are being dealt with now. The difference is, is that we got certain rights as a result of the hard work that Dr. King <clears throat> and other civil rights leaders engaged with. We've got to do the same thing here. There can't be short-lived victories. That has to be institutional change. So whatever we do, we got to make certain that we have institutional change. Are we able to, you talk about change, uh, but 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 I'd like to know, do you think that there can be a right now action that would maybe lend to a future change? And if so, what do you think that, what, what would you think that major change or action should be? I think the right now action should be the organizations that have assembled here, make sure that you get those leaders that have full reflection <laughs> to be able to organize, identify what their priorities are, mm -hmm. and then go after those priorities. Mm -hmm. So the right now action is to have to be to organize the organizations to make sure that stand out, so we have to stay at the table and be able to get things done. One last question uh, with what matters. I, you know, I, I am a Christian, I'm a child of God, and I'm a believer, and I do believe you are as well, if I remember. <laughs> and so, you know, when we look at all of our great pastors around the community and around the world that usually have our community and their churches by outstanding numbers every Sunday, is there... Uh, is there a responsibility that should lie within the pulpit for our, our leaders, our pastors, well, towards our community? Without question. I mean, uh, they are in fact, they are in fact the uh, shepherds and we're the sheep. The shepherds are supposed to take care of the sheep. Absolutely. Senator Royce West, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Now, uh, next thing. Next couple of comments I saw. A lot of passes. Jakes was on. Mm -hmm. He was on Facebook Live. KHVN, which is a, a gospel station out here in Dallas. Uh, you had some passes on. And much of the rhetoric, rhetoric was, we just got to pray, y'all. Mm -hmm. We just got to pray for this country, pray for this nation, <laughs> and everything going to be all right. <laughs> Bro, that's some slavery. That's some real slave, Man. cool, uh, jiggle boo. Jiggle boo. Right. <laughs> Damn. Oh, wow. That's crazy. That's how long we've been praying, man. How long we've been praying now? Bro. At least 40 years <laughs> since we got off the boats. Right. That's how long we've been praying. Right. Watch this. 
about your praying. What do I want to start? Proverbs mm -hmm. chapter 15, verse 29. Let's start there. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 29. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 15, verse 29. The Lord is far from the wicked. The Bible says the Lord is far from the wicked. The wicked are those who are in the midst of sin, are in the midst of iniquity, who are breaking his commandments. Come on. But he heareth the prayer of the righteous. So if he hears the prayers of the righteous, does he hear the prayers of the wicked? No. So if you break in the Sabbath, if you eat every abominable food you can think of, pork, shrimp, crab, lobster, do you honestly think that the Lord is going to hear you when you, when, when, uh, when you say, we just got to pray? We just got to hold hands in front of the courtroom, hit our knees. Kumbaya. Kumbaya. Ha -da -da, sha -da -da. No. <laughs> no. That's not going to work. Yeah. It hasn't worked. Proverbs 28.9. Let's get a little more. Proverbs chapter 2. Because it's all throughout the Bible. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law. So those that, the wicked... Those that are in transgression of God's laws, it says what? He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, Come on. even his prayer, even your prayer, you hitting your knees or whatever, shall be abomination. Is an abomination in the ears of the Most High. It is an, he hates to hear your prayer, knowing that you are willingly in the midst of sin, because the prophets are out teaching you, keep the commandments of God and live. But you say, no, nah, we don't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. Prophesy to us smooth things. We just got to pray. Mm -hmm. You just got to hit your knees. We ain't hitting our knees enough. Are you serious? <laughs> Bruised up, scratched up. Yeah, knees all <laughs> bloody and stuff because we've been on our knees since 1619 and 1492. John 9, 31. John 9, what did Christ say about praying? Let's say, okay, but for the New Testament Christians, that'll say, ah, but that was the Old Testament. Now, under the blood of Christ, uh, we say sanctify, filled with the Holy Ghost, and now we just need to pray because Christ prayed. Awesome. Come on. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. The Bible says avenge not yourself. So we don't condone what the brother did with shooting a bunch of cops and stuff like that. Right. Come on. But rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. So he said, he said, uh, but rather give place unto wrath. So we let the Lord deal with that. The Lord is going to deal with that in his time. He's going to revenge all these nations. And he's going to use us to do it. He's going to use the Israelites, those that endure to the end, to do it. So we're not, we don't condone <laughs> running up in a building and shooting down at cops and all of that. Right. That goes against the laws of God. The Lord told us to live peaceably among all men. He said, don't avenge yourself. All right. Uh, what's the other one I want? Corinthians. About, uh, uh, it's not flesh and blood. 10 and 10 and 4. Yeah. All right, this is the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 10, and verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Read it again. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We're not taking up guns. We we, we saw the, uh, what was that, the Black Panthers? Mm -hmm. the, yeah, the, the, the new Black Panther party. I thought that's what did the shooting first. That, that's what, bro. Yeah, that's probably right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because them brothers, you know, they come, you know, yeah. military. Yeah, we have our military, you know, our military guard on. Right. But the ideology behind right. it is completely against the laws of God. You know, they want to, uh, I saw a clip earlier this morning, um, you know, where brothers had, a, it was an old school movie, I forget what the movie's called, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, they had, they, they AKs and stuff, and they talking about, we, uh, you know, we got our, sec what is it, Second Amendment, right, or something yeah. like that, mm -hmm. Bro, you, you asking for trouble, because right. the brother, um, he got falsely accused, mm -hmm. um, I forget, Mark, uh, I forget his name. But uh, the brother got falsely accused of doing the shooting because yeah. he was the one that he yeah. had the clip yeah. in and everything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it's stuff like that, man. Our warfare is not carnal. Come on. Right. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. But mighty through God, through the Bible, to the pulling down of strongholds. So we use the words of God to pull down the strongholds. Come on. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself 
against the knowledge of God. Taking up guns, saying you finna. Um, I saw uh, the. Uh, they was walking in the. I think it was Oakland. They walking in the middle of the street. They. It, I'm talking about in. in oh, on the highway. Yeah, on that was highway. in Atlanta. That, they Atlanta. Did that in I'm like, what Atlanta. the hell? What purpose is this serving? <laughs> That's why we use the Bible. To cast down imagination, stronghold, every imagination that goes against the knowledge of God. Before you before you move on, yeah, I just want to get one scripture because it get uh, uh Isaiah 51, uh verse 23. Before we move on, just because I, I don't want to miss the whole aspect of being on your knees praying and, and but you still bowing down to the white man, following Cedric yep. Boje down the street. Yep. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 51 and verse 23. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, uh -huh. which have said to thy soul, bow down that we may go over. Those people that are beating you down, shooting you down, arresting you, knocking you out, knocking your daughters out because she's loud or whatever the case may be, the most high put it in their hands to do it. And they have said, bow down that we may go over. Guess what? In order for somebody to walk over you, you got to bow down to them. Nobody can walk over you when you stand up. But if you lay down, put your back on the ground, guess what? You give them the ability to walk over you. Go ahead. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground. And you, you laid your body on the ground for them to walk over. Go ahead. And as the street uh -huh. to them that went over. Get up. The days of, uh, uh, of putting your face in the dirt and you don't even know who you're praying to in the first place, right, right. those days are over. The most I told us to stand on our feet face the east when we pray anyway. Get up off your feet. Quit letting the people walk on your back. Stand up for something. Go ahead, bro. And, and and to your point about even how to pray, pray praying to the east, praying to your land. First uh, Corinthians eleven, because when I saw the uh, interview, it was the wife, of course, no head covering, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. blonde, all yellow streaks, all in and through mm -hmm. the head. The main one talking about prayer. I just we just need to fast and pray and all right. this other stuff. Corinthians. This is the book of First Corinthians, chapter eleven and verse three. But I will have you know that the head of every Get man, verse 4, every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So guess what, men, you black and Hispanic men, do not pray with a hat on or your head covering. No meat tree where you got the uh, you got uh, some camps where they have the, the bandana, that's yeah. what it is, around the head. No meat trees, come on. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth. This is the rule, the law for the women. If you praying and you prophesying, what? With her head uncovered. With your head uncovered, you do what? Dishonoreth her head. You dishonor your head. The Most High in Christ. So if you're going to pray or prophesy, you're reading the scriptures, women have your heads covered. Men have your heads uncovered. That's plain and simple. But you can't even get a law like that out of the Christian church. Basic laws like that for you New Testament Christians. That's basics. That's that's Israelite one on one. That's Bible one on one. What was what did I have you? John nine thirty one. Yeah, I still yeah. got. It. This is the book of John chapter nine verse thirty one. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. This is out of Christ's mouth. He said what? Now we know that God heareth not sinners. Come on. But if any man be a worshipper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. But if you do the will of God, which is keeping the commandments, that's who God will hear. So stop with the hitting your knees, and we're just going to pray our way out of this thing. Because you've been praying. You prayed for Trayvon Martin, mm -hmm. and then Sam DuBose happened. You prayed for Sam DuBose, and then uh, Alton Sterling happened. Mm -hmm. So obviously, something ain't working, or somebody lying. Mm -hmm. It's both. Lamentations. Lamentations, chapter... What are I right now? Lamentations, chapter 3, and verse 40. This is the book of Lamentations, chapter 3 and verse 40. So this is what we got to do. Black man, Hispanic man. Because at one time, matter of fact, hold that. Because I would have been at the march. If I didn't know who I was, I'd have been at the march. I'd have been rallying with everybody else in the crowd, in the mix. I would have been that brother, Titus 3 and 3. Hold that, Titus 3 and 3. Like many of us would have been. Some of us would not have been because it would be like, I, I mean, you know, they just they just marching or whatever. Right. You know, what's the point? Right. Come on. This is the book of Titus chapter 3 and verse 3. Let me show you something. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. Because we ourselves, we were sometimes foolish as hell thinking, me and the Christian church, I would have been the one to say, yo, we just got to pray. That's what pastor said. <laughs> That's what the deacon said. 
That's what Bishop uh, such and such said, right? Mm -hmm. It says what? For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. Come on. Disobedient. Disobedient. Disobeying the laws of God. Deceived. Deceived. Following white man Jesus as he's in the forefront of the march. Following that black cross, which is a symbol of our oppression. Come on. Serving diverse lust and pleasures. But still been in the midst of adultery, mm -hmm. fornication, lying, murder, everything else. Was that it? No, sir. Come on. Living in malice and Living envy. In hate. Hatred, envy. Hateful and hating one another. Hateful and hating one another. That's where you get your black on black crime from. Man, oh, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I was talking to a brother trying to wake this brother up and give him the truth. And I, I told him, he asked me, how does God laws save our community? Because that's what we were out there to do. Show our people how God laws change our community, who we are, and so forth. He said, well, how does God laws work then? I said, well, if we apply Leviticus 19, 17, which says, hate not thy brother in their heart, suffer not sin upon your brother, and so forth, right? He says, well, that can apply to everybody. I said, okay, it could apply to everybody, but black-on-black -black crime is the issue at hand. He said, well, all nations have the same thing. You got white-on-white -white crime, Asian-on-Asian -Asian crime. I said, brother, don't be simple. I know white people kill other white people. I know Asians kill other Asians. But which one of those is actually a proverb in the world? Black-on-black -black crime for a reason. Black-on-black right. -black crime is at a higher rate than anybody else. He says, no, it's all the same rate across the board. Yeah, yeah. I said, you must be foolish. Right. If you, have, if you take a test at school, and you had A, B, and C, which one would you mark? He gonna circle all of them. That's not part of the thing. <laughs> which one would you get right? He, 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 he gonna circle all of them. Right. Because be according to some big word he used, he was right that all all nations have crime against each other and it's all at the same rate. It's ridiculous. That's the fool that's that uh deceiving and being deceived. Deceive. You deceitful as hell if you're telling somebody that. Come on. Man. Yeah, all yeah, we all killing each other the same rate. No, we're not. Are you serious? <laughs> Come on. Lamentations. Uh. This is the book of Lamentations, chapter 3 and verse 40. And so this is the message for the Israelite man, the Israelite woman, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. This is the message. Come on. Let us search and try our ways. And search and try your ways. What the what why do we keep marching and keep protesting and nothing changes? Apparently, something needs to change. Something else needs to change. Maybe it's me. Let us what? Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Turn to the Most High God. Repent as an Israelite. Keep the commandments. Come on. Let us lift up our heart with our hands unto God in the heavens. Repent. Then you can lift your hands up and start to pray to the Most High. Come on. We have transgressed and have rebelled. So this is the same thing that, that uh, is being said in 1 Kings 8 about prayer, making supplication. Come on. Thou hast not pardoned. It says what? We have what? We have transgressed and have rebelled. Thou hast not pardoned. And the Lord has not pardoned us for that. That's why we're getting shot in the streets still. Come on. Thou hast covered with anger and persecuted us. Come on. Thou hast slain. Thou hast not pitied. The Lord put it on the spirit of the so-called white man to judge us for our sins against him. Mm -hmm. Come on. Thou hast covered thyself with a cloud. That our prayers should not pass through. Wait, 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 wait. But I thought we just had to pray <laughs> and fast. <laughs> Read it again. Thou hast covered thyself with a cloud that our prayers should not pass through. So guess what? Because of your sins, your transgressions, your iniquities against the Most High, he has covered himself with a cloud so that our prayers, your prayers, will not pass through to his ears. Why? Because we read in Proverbs 28 that your prayer is an abomination if you're in the midst of sin. You can't even apply something as simple as 1 Corinthians 11, 4 and 5. Uh, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 11, yeah, verse 4 and 5. Mm -hmm. You can't apply something as simple as that. Come on. Verse 45, thou hast made us an off scurrying and refuse in the midst of the people. That's crap. Dumb. Mm. Boo, boo, yeah, doo -doo. boo boo. Doo doo in the midst of the other nations. That's what you that's what you're compared to. That's what you're likened to amongst these other nations, in the eyes of the other nations. Even the look, even the ones that are marching next to you, mm -hmm. even the ones that are praying next to you and you holding hands and all of this other stuff, you think that you don't think they having side conversations about you when they get around their white friends? Negro, they doing that for a photo op. 
<laughs> they trying to uh, uh, get up they, they friends list. Right, so that, uh, what's the president that was, the, the, the one who was running for president behind Hillary? What's his name? Uh, Bernie, Bernie, yeah. Bernie, whatever. He, uh, he had some photos of him with us back in the days in the 60s and so forth. Yeah. He in the midst of the people. How, how, how convenient is it that we got over 30 to 40 uh, photos of this guy um, during that time? It, if all the random cameras, you mean to tell me you popped up in each one of them? <laughs> Come on, black people, wake up, man. <laughs> read, read it again. This is the book of Lamentations, chapter 3 and verse 45. Thou hast made us an offscurring and refused in the midst of the people. That's that uh, proverb, byword, astonishment. Nigga. Nigga, coon. Come on, uh, thug. Mm -hmm. uh, give me some more. African American. Uh, African American. Uh, you a thug. Any, anything Man, outside, anything outside of our God given name. Right. Because if, if they call us the Israelites, you're saying we're the best people on the earth. Anything outside of that is dumb. Right. So yeah. even them calling you equal is an insult. That's Hell. an insult. Deuteronomy. Man. I know you wanted it. Deuteronomy. <laughs> Seven. Uh, six. Six. Yeah. Come on. Let's let's deal with this equal thing. Yeah, We're going to smash this right now. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. We just want equality in the earth. There ain't going to be no equality. Right, because um, I brought out a book last week. The reason why they, they preach equality is to keep them on, on top. Right. Right. They tell you that, but meanwhile, they own everything. Right. The only equality is in their eyes is if they're in rulership. Right. right. That's it. Right. Come on. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. So the Most High God is speaking to the Israelites through Moses. And he said what? For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Come on. The Lord thy God has chosen thee. Has chosen the Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. To be a special people. To be a special people people mm -hmm. unto himself unto himself meaning we're the he, he's our god none else because he chose us as his special people to himself come on above all people that are above wait, wait, wait. below above equal to above said what above above who all people that, all the other nations that are upon the face of the earth all the other nations of the earth are subject to to That's the Israelites right. will be subject to the Israelites when Christ returns when we're set back up in rulership that's right the so called white man is only in power for a, 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 a dispensation of time only for a certain period of time he's not going to be in rulership forever because if he was this earth would not last much longer mm -hmm. guaranteed you look at the sea you look at the, the, the land mm -hmm. all the raping and pillaging that they've done mm -hmm. the atmosphere yeah, the atmosphere, the ozone layer, all of that stuff, man. Lamentations. Uh, uh, verse 45. This is the book of Lamentations, chapter 3 and verse 45. Thou hast made us as the offscurring and refused in the midst of the people. Come on. All our enemies have opened their mouths against us. That's why they can go on the news and you'll have, uh, you'll have Alton Sterling, you'll have his, um, not profile pic, what's the word I'm looking for? Just, uh, the mugshot. Mugs, yeah, you have yeah. his mugshot, but you have a white woman that murdered a, a, a homeless yeah, man, yeah. and you got her profile yeah, picture. Yeah, you got her right, Facebook right. page it, it, or Twitter. Yeah. Like, yeah. The mother that murdered her, her daughter and tried to murder her husband, uh, they put a, 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 it ain't pretty to me, but what they consider a pretty yeah. picture of her. Makeup yeah. on, yeah. all that, yeah. yeah. Because, in it, because they don't want to diminish their image, right. their image. Right. They don't want to do that. But our image, read it again. All our enemies have opened their mouths against us. But for us, they open their mouths against us and say we punks, we thugs, we all got mug shots. I ain't got no mug shots. I ain't never been to jail. They'll make one. Huh? They'll make one. They'll, they'll, yeah, they'll make yeah, yeah. They'll, 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 They ain't got no problem forging one or whatever. Yeah, they'll Photoshop one. Yeah, they'll Photoshop real easy. Real quick. Come on. Fear and snare is come upon us. So that's why the officer read earlier in Deuteronomy 28 that we, we would have no ease, mm -hmm. no rest, no none assurance of life. Mm -hmm. Read it again. Fear and snare is come upon us. Fear, a snare is a trap. That's why you have drugs rampant in the community. Uh, what was it? Uh, during Reagan's time. Mm -hmm. The war on drugs that they had mm -hmm. when they were putting they the drugs it. in the community, <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. putting the guns in the community. That's a snare. That's a trap. Right. Come on.
fear and snares come upon us, desolation and destruction. Desolation and destructions. That's why you can go to uh, uh, black and Hispanic neighborhoods and it looks like crap. They don't, they don't care about y'all. I need y'all to understand that. I need y'all to understand that. All the other nations, they don't care about your well-being. They don't want to make sure. Why are y'all, the, even the, um, you have the, the, the handful that'll be on Facebook uh, rooting for us or whatever. <laughs> don't be deceived by that. Please don't be deceived by that. Because that's all it is. The words in their mouth is smoother than butter. They'll say one thing. But then when when uh, when it really comes down to it, let them have to stand in front of a They're not going to stand in front of no bullet for you. All that has to do is economics, man. That, that's all it is. Let's, let's keep them up just enough or build them up just enough to make sure that they stay working, to make sure that they don't separate. Mm-hmm. Because if they do, Black Wall Street may happen again. If they do, our economics goes down. Right. Because how you think they, like the officer brought out in the book, how you think they built this country up in the first place? We read it in uh, uh, Habakkuk. Yeah, remember, it. and more important than building, their main focus was maintain. Right. Right. Oh, boy. Uh, read, uh, read Psalm 55 and 20 right quick. Psalm 55 and 20, dealing with the same thing before, before the officer move on. Yeah. This is the book of Psalm, chapter 55 and verse 20. He had put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. Right. So even in today's time, going back to, we just take it back to when they conquered the Native Americans, right? The Native Americans allowed them onto this land. They allowed them onto this land, right? Such as be at peace with him. He says that he had put forth his hand against them. Go ahead. He had broken his covenant. If you know anything about history, they made a covenant, a so-called covenant with the so-called Native American Indians, the tribe of Gad. Go ahead. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. As the officer just said, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter. These people are crafty as hell. They'll tell you anything to get what they want. Go ahead. But war was in his heart. But what? But war was in his heart. Read. His words were softer than oil, mm-hmm. yet were they drawn swords. His words were softer than baby oil on your skin. That's how soft and smooth his words were. But it says, yet were they drawn swords. Meaning what? They, that he just, they don't care about you. They'll say and do anything, march with you, and so forth. And use uh, a, a token Negro is what they call it, mm-hmm. right. to get their uh, publicity or whatever it is they're looking for. Whatever they're searching for, they'll use you. But they don't care nothing about you because why? Destruction is in their heart. The sword is already drawn. They sitting there smiling at you, and the sword is already drawn. They want you to put yours down. They want you to make peace. They want you to be, uh, what's the word? Uh, not subtle, but they want you to be uh, docile. docile. They want you to be under them and so forth and be asleep. <laughs> Only if they can rule over you with the sword. And that's what they do today. And, and what they do, they, they, their craftiness and their cunning is that they'll set certain of us and give us positions. I was just, mm-hmm. I was just, about, you and I was just thinking that. Go ahead, go ahead. I mean, because they even made a movie about it. it. Even going back to what you mentioned about Reagan, right, during the drug wars and so forth, they'll use it two ways. They'll find a ghetto Negro who got pulled in the Negro and so forth. They'll supply him, and he becomes a supplier for everybody else. And all the rest of them, they go to jail for selling drugs and doing this and doing that. But meanwhile, you got this one Negro who's a supplier who gets his supply from the enemy. But they give him a pardon because he's working for them, right? Same thing in the, the so-called offices, going back to the senator we met the other day. This Negro is known, known amongst his people and so forth. But guess what? Let's put him in a nice, comfortable office. As long as the people are asleep and doing all the dumb stuff they're doing, we'll make him seem like he's righteous. We'll put him up at some football games, and we'll put him up in front of the city council. And he'll come speak at a school or two or whatever and keep the people asleep. But they could care less because if, like I asked them that day, if they really cared about us, why are you not using your seat to change our community? You're sitting up there with the rest of these people who make decisions and pass laws. Why come you ain't passed a law to help us? That's going to hurt his pockets. Exactly. That's what it is. It's all about economics. Man. That, again, they, they put people in place that they choose. Excuse me. Second Corinthians 11, <clears throat> and then I want Revelation 1. All of these different religions, I'm, I need you to understand. All of these different religions, it puts different spirits on you. I'm going to prove that. 2 Corinthians 11. Yeah, this is verse 4. Yeah, this is the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus... So guess who came and preached another Jesus? The so-called white man who said that Christ was a white man, 
The angels are white. Uh, angel food cake is good. Mm-hmm. Chocolate cake is bad. Right. Come on. Whom we have not preached. Whom the apostles didn't preach. Come on. Or if ye receive another spirit. Or if ye receive another spirit. Come on. Which ye have not received. Which ye have not received. Or another gospel. Uh Uh-huh. Which ye have not accepted. Uh Uh-huh. Ye might well bear with him. Watch this. All of these different religions put spirits on you. That's why in Christianity you can have an effeminate spirit. Mm -hmm. And say all we need to do is pray. But you're not going to actually move to do something. Islam will put a a radical violent spirit on you. Mm -hmm. Which is why I wouldn't be surprised if that brother was dealing with that, with uh, dealing in uh, um, Islam, and he was a Muslim or whatever, because it'll put that spirit on you, that violent, wrathful spirit, like Malcolm X had. Now I'm gonna show you the real Christ, Revelation one and fourteen. This is the book of Revelation, chapter one and verse fourteen. His head and his hairs were white like wool. His head and his hairs was white like wool, as white as snow. Uh huh. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Because he drank wine in moderation. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. So guess what? His feet were like unto fine brass. If you look at a penny, it's brown, a copper color, as if it burned, meaning he was a very dark-skinned man. Come on. And his voice as the sound of many waters. And he was loud. That's what the real Jesus the Christ looked like. Yeah. I, I saw this post the other day, and I thought it was powerful, right? Going back to, like he said, not even knowing the image of Christ. Our people believe that white is better than black, right? This is something so simple, but yet so true. When you mention the, the word or the name vanilla, most people associate vanilla with something white. Right. When in turn, a vanilla bean is black. is black, right? It's just something that simple to show you how destroyed we are. Like, we don't even, we don't realize how destroyed we are and what lengths they went to to make us believe that black is uh, inferior to white. And do what you are told, or die and go to hell for resisting. There you go. Read on. Because that means they were preaching white Jesus is what that's telling you. Go ahead. This involved the role of the black church. The role of the what? The black church. Let me see. Who was leading the uh, protest the other day when uh, brothers got shot up and so forth? Brothers' cars got shot up, locked down in the city. Who was leading that protest? I'm Elder Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.